Hello. There he is. <laughs> He's on a tractor. Oh yeah, makeup's waiting for you. I've had the studio on Granville Island for 40 years, so that's starting to look serious. I have absolutely no idea why I started making dragon heads. I think the main reason was that it was a technical challenge. It's like my, my um, spaceships. I don't know why I started making these either early um, lunar landings on the moon that didn't work. They don't talk about them at NASA. So the, the material itself is magical and it's challenging. And um, one of the nice things is that it, it allows anyone to enter in and, and work with it. For the most part, you're welcome. There is the occasional um, constipated individual who doesn't want to tell you things or is secretive about some aspect of their work. But for the most part, the men and women in the clay world are very collegial and more than willing to help one another. So I'm really lucky or feel lucky to be part of that larger community. While I'm working on wall murals, um, Mysteriously, energy is building up in the background to work on masks. When I'm working on masks, uh, energy is building up to do go back to some functional wear. Maybe everyone works this way. If you're working in one area, energy is building up to explore other areas. So he'll he'll go in your home and and be a positive addition possibly more handsome than your children. Not that there are a lot of ugly children around. I could work on a rocket. You know what? The yard is just stunning at the moment. Look at this! Lunar landing! Yeah. Looks good. So what's the story with this one? This is called Lunar Landing 1947. Um, the uh, Americans and Russians had perfected the liftoff, mm -hmm. but the engineers hadn't quite solved the landing problem. Right. And so there were a lot of things like this. This is a lunar landing for the Harry Lauder tree branches. So it's practical. I'm making practical things. Practical lunar landings. Yeah, but the fact simply is I'm left alone a bit much. And when that happens, things go a bit amok. And is this things going amok? Yeah. And it's perfect because that's where I feel comfortable. The other day visiting this friend up in Chase, he said, Bob, you're the, you're the one that got me making pots a long time ago. And I said, well, you better just shut up. I'm not taking the blame for that. That's your problem. <laughs> I may have been there. And who do you think is to blame for you making pots in the first place? It's a woman. And she was a diminutive sweetheart called Muriel Guest. And she lived in the same boarding house I lived in in Winnipeg. Okay. So I took one lesson from her, discovered I really liked it, and quit, quit the press and went off and went to Banff for the summer. So it sounds kind of like the arts found you. You weren't necessarily looking for them. That's right. It was serendipity raising her ugly and, and unfortunate head. And now here I am 50 years later still doing it. So how do I get out of this? It's important to write just as for a lot of people it's important to sketch and do some um, drawings because ideas float through our heads like a quiet river or stream and if we can capture some of the ideas on, uh, on a bit of paper, then we have them.
hardly do anything alone, you know. We have all these people in our midst to help. And if they, if they don't help directly, they help by example. Most of the time I'm just content and happy and lucky and grateful and grateful to be where I am. And for the most part where I've been. That's a pretty good summary of That's life. not bad. <laughs>